How did Matt Diavella go from a broke college student with $100,000 in debt to now releasing his second Netflix documentary about minimalism, Less Is Now, while also inspiring millions on YouTube? Here's the full untold story starting from his humble beginnings of making weird parody videos where he's peeing in a grocery store? Don't worry, it'll all make sense later. Matt was lucky to find his passion early on. It was the first thing that I really was passionate about. If I can just make a living doing this, mm -hmm. if I can pay the bills as a creative, that's a dream for me. When you see someone like Matt online with amazing production quality, it can be very discouraging when you're just starting out. He's got this insane quality, crisp audio, the structure of his videos is just perfectly balanced. And then it's so easy to idolize them. And you know, I would never do that, it's just... <laughs> But maybe you muster up the courage to finally put yourself out there and take action, create something, and publish it. And so did Matt, by making a rap video in a grocery store. That was the first time maybe 100,000, 200,000 people saw that a, a video that I made. I'm in it for keepsake, in a field with the cleat lace, beat fruit with the bare face and a slick tie, that's what she say. This is not what it looked like. It was more like, more like this. We got the veggies to boot, salad to celery root. This is the produce paradise, it goes a salute. I'm not sure if you're able to see the slight difference in production quality and videography skills to where he is now. But don't come up to me, acting all rude, because I won't be afraid to pee in your food. He didn't start out super talented. He started out making this. Which brings me to the first important lesson. Be willing to suck, because you will in the beginning. And everyone you look up to has sucked as well. So now you finally made it, you put yourself out there, the video got over 100,000 views. And then I got sued by the grocery store we filmed the video in for $7 million. It was equally exciting as well as terrifying because we were already broke college students. Seven million on counts of defamation, infringement, and disparagement. The brothers styling themselves as a group called Fresh Beats. <laughs> Get it? Beats? Stand with bananas, suggestively hanging out of their pants at one point. The brothers' depiction of phallic bananas and prepackaged, pre-licked lettuce are a few of the things that could turn off grocery store customers who view the sketch. <laughs> now this is cool. We basically made t-shirts and sold them to raise money for our lawyers. So they actually sold two to 300 t-shirts. You just have to love the guy. But we ended up kind of settling and removing the video from the internet, though it can be found. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry, Matt. I, sorry, I should. You finally put yourself out there and you get punched in the face immediately. But of course, this wasn't the only obstacle that Matt had to overcome. Filmmaking is already extremely competitive, but Matt had already set himself up to be a starving artist from the beginning by graduating with $100,000 in student loan debt. And I did the smartest thing I could think of, which was to buy a brand new car. All he wanted was to get out of debt and hopefully one day make a living with filmmaking. His career then officially started where any great career starts in the basement. So it was like $120,000 in debt. I'm living in my parents' basement and I just felt like a failure. And just kind of like looking at my life and just feeling kind of disappointed about the direction it was heading. It seems like everyone with just a little bit of ambition feels like this nowadays when they're in their early 20s. Even if they just finished their education a few years ago, we always think we should be so much further ahead in life because we're always comparing ourselves. And Matt felt the exact same way. You're not alone. We all feel like that. And so Matt had no other choice than to do anything he could to get out of debt and reach his goal. If I didn't make a change at that moment, then I would have to be paying this off for the next 20 years. So he got to work. I will take any job that I can get. It was years and years before I started to make money as a filmmaker. Even if I was making $8 an hour in the end, I get a gig for dozens of weddings, bar mitzvah intro videos, a reality show. So I'm like really nervous because I literally don't even know where the record button is. All of a sudden this woman like loses her and she goes crazy. And it's like great television for them. The producer says, that's perfect, we got it, cut, that's a wrap for the day. And then I looked at my camera and I wasn't recording. I wasn't recording. When the deck is stacked against you and you're just facing adversity, it can be really crippling. But what I've seen is there's actually a key ingredient because it gives you the emotional leverage to push through. That's what gets you going. That was like my main driver in life at that time. It was a weight on my shoulders, but it was also just something that I was just so driven to pay off. So you wanna let adversity drive you, let it motivate you. See, when I started my first business, it was because I was forced to leave Australia. I had my girlfriend there, and the only way I could come back to Australia 
earlier, which I promised her I would do, was to build a business. So I had all this adversity and leverage and without it, I would have never built my first business. Do you think without the debt, Matt would have had the drive to do all these crappy jobs that would give him so much experience in the end? And it's common to feel very discouraged and, and crippled during these times where you're just doing these crappy jobs and you see everyone else doing so well on social media and then fear creeps in. Is this ever gonna work out? What if it doesn't? How long will it take? What if this is going nowhere and I'm just wasting my time? But this was a turning point for Matt. I felt like a failure, and that's when I found this thing called minimalism. I was just like watching MTV late at night, and I saw this interview with Carson Daly and Tom Shadiak, one of the like greatest Hollywood comedy directors. And he basically was telling his story about how he got everything he thought he was supposed to want, and he wasn't happy. He moved into the 10,000 square foot man mansion, and it felt empty. And then he decided to get rid of everything and move into a trailer park in Malibu. It just blew my mind. And it was just kind of like, took me outside of the path that I was on and made me think twice about where I was heading. And I just realized, like, I don't need to get to this place until I can be happy. So very early on, he, he saw this as huge inspiration to, to focus on what really, really mattered. I realized I actually had a lot to be thankful for. I had a family that supported me. I have friends that made me laugh. Um, I, I didn't have a ton of money, but I had a lot of potential in my skills and in a career that I could build for myself. I chose in that moment that I didn't have to wait until a future hypothetical moment to be happy. I could be happy with what I have and I could still be driven for creating a better future. And then that's where like my life completely changed. It means that I can be more intentional with where I want to head and I can focus on the right things. Maybe you're currently going through these struggles where you, you right at the beginning, you're doing crappy jobs, you're not going anywhere. If you're happy now, you're not distracted by shiny objects, you can keep putting in the work, keep getting better because spoiler alert, achieving all these things is not gonna make you happy. I know it's so boring to hear, you've heard it so many times, just like me, I have as well, and I always thought, I know, I get it, yes, yes, success doesn't make you happy, okay, but let me become successful. And I would always have these goals where I was like, once I'll achieve this, then I'll be happy. So I wasted all this time chasing and being miserable instead of just enjoying the process, which I wish I would've done earlier. And I admire Matt for learning this so early on. Because of this, he was already happy. He didn't need validation from others. And that's what allowed him to just keep putting in the work, keep getting better and slowly build himself up. Reading books, like I read so much Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, Tony Robbins, audiobooks, whatever it was, like I absorbed it. Like just when you hear so many people say, it's possible, I did it, it's possible, I did it. Uh, you start to believe it yourself. While living in his parents' basement for two years. I think I left with $60,000 in student loan debt. Over the course of about four to six years, really developing some pretty great clients and working with a lot of tech and startup companies and making more money and helping to work my way out of debt. I want a bigger challenge and I want to create my first feature length documentary, which is when I set out to make minimalism a documentary. I legitimately had to do everything. When it came to shooting and editing, it was just me. Non-stop shooting for a couple years and editing and going back and forth, not having any plan for how we were going to get it out there. But then you get to the point where you're like, this is my one shot to really make this film what it could be. They released the documentary and it was a banger. Check out this documentary. I watched that documentary, The uh, Minimalists. There's a cool little movie out called The Minimalists. We never expected it to get on Netflix, let alone make the money, the $50,000 we put into it back, let alone make a profit on top of that. Which then allowed him to pay off another big chunk of his debt. At that point, I had paid off a majority of my student loans. I probably had paid off about 90% of it. But still, his goal from the beginning remained. I knew I was ready for a change, and I'd always want to be an original content creator, whatever that was. I always wanted to be able to create something myself and hopefully establish an audience. And this is when he took the leap and started his YouTube and podcast journey. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Matt Diavella. I'm a documentary filmmaker, and this is my new YouTube channel. This is something new. I'm not sure where to look. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. I was so close to not ever even starting a YouTube channel or starting a podcast because wow. I had so much doubt before I got into it. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna give myself two years all out everything I can to make this happen. I was burning through my savings. And if I didn't, 
So think about this. Here you have a Netflix documentary filmmaker who's willing to go back to the beginning of starting something where he has to learn how to podcast, he has to figure out how YouTube works, he's full of doubt, and he's putting his savings on the line. So it's not like you achieve something and then you just made it. You're always going to want to pivot a little bit or try something new, and you're gonna be back at being a beginner again, and the cycle repeats. So then he started with videos like Don't Ask For Permission, How To Make Nothing, Shea Butter Changed My Life, mainly just short clips from his interviews and a new podcast episode every week. In the beginning, it's kind of frustrating. And sometimes I feel like I'm putting out really great content, but still nobody is listening, nobody's watching, it's not grabbing hold. Which then leads to, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned from Matt Diavella, and I wish I would have learned it earlier, which is just, it's gonna be boring again. It's gonna be something you've already heard consistency. Make stuff, get feedback, and then pivot. Don't try to figure it all out. Just make consistently. You have to put in the work when the doubt is probably at the highest, when the obstacles are the largest, and you just got to keep going. The steps will reveal themselves as you keep walking. You can't look too far into the distance. And even after an entire year of creating consistently, things were still only growing slowly for Matt. And you know, you keep creating, you keep putting yourself out there and you keep iterating until an opportunity shows up. I saw some videos online, people doing apartment tours. So I made a video called My Minimalist Apartment. That happened about a year and a half into it. And it was the first video that I made that took off in a crazy way where within a couple of days it got 20,000 views. Yeah. Those moments, you're like, this is unreal. Like this, yeah. it feels amazing. Fast forward to where he is now at over 3 million subscribers with 900 people supporting him on his Patreon for original content that he loves making, launching the Slow Growth Academy course platform and releasing his second documentary about minimalism, Less Is Now. This channel is for those who want to achieve their most meaningful goals to live a life without regrets. Please do not subscribe unless you actually enjoyed this. Next up, let's help Matt get the rock on his podcast. Thanks for watching.